Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Anthony Muhammad. Uh, I, too, would like to begin by echoing the sentiments of all who came before me and thanking Senator Carter and Delegate Pastura for their brave sponsorship of this legislation. I'm honored to be here with this distinguished panel group coalition. 31 years ago, at the age of 15, I was arrested in Baltimore City for two homicide charges. I was ultimately convicted and sentenced to life plus 20 years in prison. The judge who sentenced me mistakenly believed that I was unredeemable, unreformable, and that the actions that I had committed were unreconciled. She stated that I had showed little hope of rehabilitation. And she said that she did not believe that education, job training, and things of that nature would ever make me a safe citizen again. Thankfully, the judge who sentenced me was all wrong about me. 17 months ago, I was released under the Juvenile Restoration Act at the age of 45 after serving a total of 29 years, seven months, and 29 days. But here's the interesting point. The judge who released me said the exact opposite about me than the judge who sentenced me. The judge who released me said that in all of her years on the bench, I was the first violent offender, that she had absolutely no reservations about releasing back into the community. She said that what I had accomplished throughout my incarceration was so remarkable that in all of her years on the bench, she had never witnessed, seen, or heard anything of that nature. I'm saying that to say that I am not unique. And Chairman Smith and Chairman Clippinger, whom I've met with personally, talked to face to face, who applaud me for all of the change and transition that I've made, cannot in this hour be hypocritical because all of the men who raised me, all of the men who taught me the morals, the principles, the values that I live by to this very moment, and I see my elder Ron Ellis here, all of the men that raised me as a 15, 16, 17 year old in the Merlin State Penitentiary, 30 years later are still there, many of whom were there decades before I arrived. You can't say that because of a change in law that I deserve the opportunity. But now when the opportunity comes for you to give those well deserving of the opportunity the same opportunity that I have. And it is without dispute that this category of people are not only rehabilitated, but it is without dispute that they no longer pose a threat to public safety. And the only point of opposition that I have heard from those who oppose this bill is victims, victims, victims. And I'll close with this point. I spent the last decade of my incarceration hosting all, not some, all of the leading victim rights organizations in the state of Maryland victim rights advocates. We brought them into the prisons to speak to the inmate population, to hear the pain, to hear the sorrow, to experience the ripple effect of our actions and what they cause. And it is that experience that produces real remorse when you come face to face with the reality of what your actions have done. And since my release, I have had the opportunity to sit down with the families of my victims through victim offender mediation who have given me their forgiveness for crimes that I committed at the age of 15. What we are saying is that people, all of the data, all of the research, all of the studies unanimously show that people change. People age out of crime. So it's only common sense that after two, three, four, five decades later, 
somebody should have the opportunity to revisit sentences of people who committed crimes as teenagers. So that is all I will share. I will join this distinguished coalition, and I thank you for the invitation. <laughs>